Holy Spirit, Jesus Christ, Father God, you will make a way where there seems to be no way. Thank you that even if we can't see the way ahead, even if we feel tossed by a storm, if we just don't understand what is happening with our lives, we can have hope and joy and peace. We can have faith in you. In your wisdom, you know all things. You see our past, our present, our future, all at the same time. You know exactly what you are doing. You intend to keep your promises to us. My Lord, I thank you that in you we can have great confidence. Please open our eyes and our ears and our hearts and our minds to your word. Amen. Exodus chapter 6 Then the Lord told Moses, Now you will see what I will do to Pharaoh. When he feels the force of my strong hand, he will let the people go. In fact, he will force them to leave his land. And God said to Moses, I am Yahweh, the Lord. I appeared to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob as El Shaddai, God Almighty. But I did not reveal my name, Yahweh, to them. And I reaffirmed my covenant with them. Under its terms, I promised to give them the land of Canaan, where they were living as foreigners. You can be sure that I have heard the groans of the people of Israel, who are now slaves to the Egyptians, and I am well aware of my covenant with them. Therefore, say to the people of Israel, I am the Lord, I will free you from your oppression and will rescue you from your slavery in Egypt. I will redeem you with a powerful arm and great acts of judgment. I will claim you as my own people and I will be your God. Then you will know that I am the Lord, your God, who has freed you from your oppression in Egypt. I will bring you into the land I swore to give to Abraham, Isaac and Jacob. I will give it to you as your very own possession. I am the Lord. So Moses told the people of Israel what the Lord had said, but they refused to listen any more. They had become too discouraged by the brutality of their slavery. Then the Lord said to Moses, Go back to Pharaoh, the king of Egypt, and tell him to let the people of Israel leave his country. But Lord, Moses objected, my own people won't listen to me any more. How can I expect Pharaoh to listen? I am such a clumsy speaker. But the Lord spoke to Moses and Aaron and gave them orders for the Israelites and for Pharaoh, the king of Egypt. The Lord commanded Moses and Aaron to lead the people of Israel out of Egypt. These are the ancestors of some of the clans of Israel. The sons of Reuben, Israel's oldest son, were Hanok, Palu, Hezron and Kami. Their descendants became the clans of Reuben. The sons of Simeon 
were Jemuel, Jamin, Ohad, Jakin, Zohar, and Shaul. Shaul's mother was a Canaanite woman. Their descendants became the clans of Simeon. These are the descendants of Levi, as listed in their family records. The sons of Levi were Gershon, Kohath, and Merari. Levi lived to be 137 years old. The descendants of Gershon included Libni and Shimei, each of whom became the ancestor of a clan. The descendants of Kohath included Amram, Izhar, Hebron and Uziel. Kohath lived to be 133 years old. The descendants of Merari included Mali and Mushi. These are the clans of the Levites, as listed in their family records. Amram married his father's sister, Jochebed, and she gave birth to his sons, Aaron and Moses. Amram lived to be 137 years old. The sons of Ishar were Korah, Nepheg, and Zikri. The sons of Uziel were Mishael, Elzaphan, and Sithri. Aaron married Elisheba, the daughter of Aminadab, and sister of Narsham, and she gave birth to his sons, Nabat, Abihu, Eliezer, and Ithamar. The sons of Korah were Aser, Elkanah, and Abiasaph. Their descendants became the clans of Korah. Eliezer, son of Aaron, married one of the daughters of Putuel, and she gave birth to his son, Phinehas. These are the ancestors of the Levite families, listed according to their clans. The Aaron and Moses, named in this list, are the same ones to whom the Lord said, Lead the people of Israel out of the land of Egypt, like an army. It was Moses and Aaron who spoke to Pharaoh, the king of Egypt, about leading the people of Israel out of Egypt. When the Lord spoke to Moses in the land of Egypt, he said to him, I am the Lord. Tell Pharaoh, the king of Egypt, everything I am telling you. But Moses argued with the Lord, saying, I can't do it. I am such a clumsy speaker. Why should Pharaoh listen to me? This is the word of our Lord. Thanks be to God. Father, I thank you, again, that you are in control. In the previous chapter, which chapter we read, there was total uncertainty. The Israelites didn't understand what on earth you were doing, and Moses argued with you because he didn't understand what you were doing, what you were doing. But I thank you here in this passage, you make it clear. I know the promises I made to Abraham, Isaac and Jacob that I would make them a great nation and that they would settle in the land of Canaan. Thank you, Father God, that you had your plan worked out. And I thank you that you heard the groan of your people. At a time where your promises seemed uncertain, you proclaimed them clearly to them. And I thank you that in our own lives, we might be at the point where we just feel like giving in. We might be at a point where we just feel like, did God really promise this? But I thank you that when we least expect it, you will show us the way. When we least expect it, you'll say, this is what I am doing in your life. Thank you, Father, that we can trust you. And you will give us the abilities that we need. Moses keeps speaking about his inability to speak properly, 
his clumsy speaking ability. But you were going to use him. It wasn't going to stop you. And I thank you that in our own lives, we may have our own limitations. We may have our own disabilities. We may have our own difficulties, but you will empower us. Thank you that we can trust in you always. Amen.